All right, let's solve this problem. We have a flower pot falling off of a windowsill and some information is given. After it falls a certain distance, it passes a window and the height of that window is given and the time that it takes the flower pot to pass that window is given. And so we're gonna figure out the original height of the flower pot. And we start off by trying to understand the problem. We draw a picture, look for key words, to figure out what kind of problem it is and state our assumptions. After that, we'll set up the problem and um, solve it and think about our answer to see if it makes sense. So we've got a tall building. Here's a window cell. Here's a flower pot and uh, at some point down here we have a window The flower pot starts out from rest. And it falls past this window. The dimensions of the window are given. One point nine meters. And what we want to know is how high above the top of that window did the flower pot start out? And that's I'm just going to call it H for now. That's a zero. And what we want to do is state our assumptions in solving this problem, basically, and look for some key words that help us solve the problem. So we have a flower pot falling under the influence of gravity, and that's a free fall problem. That's a projectile motion problem. And we solve that with our kinematics equations as long as the acceleration is constant. If you remember, those kinematics equations were all derived from the uh, definition of velocity and the definition of acceleration and we made the assumption that acceleration was constant. So what we're going to do here is assume that we have no air drag because that means that the only acceleration acting on our flower pot is the acceleration of gravity. And as long as this building isn't a, a super tall building, as long as it's not thousands of feet tall, then the acceleration of gravity is the same uh, at the top of the building as it is at the bottom of the building. It's relatively constant near the surface of the Earth. If this flower pot was falling out of a, an airplane uh, thousands of meters in the air, then it might be a little different at that altitude. Luckily, we don't have to worry about that here. We have constant acceleration. We can use our kinematics equations. So in order to do that, we need to set up our problem. We need to define our origin and our positive direction. So the origin, we can pick pretty much any place we want. With the two places that make the most sense, uh, or maybe three places, would be the bottom of the window, the top of the window, or where the flower pot starts out from, the window sill. I'm gonna pick the bottom of the window. So that means that right over here, I have y equals zero. I'm gonna pick up as my positive direction. You can pick down as your positive direction. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna pick up. Okay, so what we have here is, is actually more like two problems because a bunch of information is given after the flower pot already has some initial speed. When it gets to the top of the window, it's got some initial velocity. And it tells us that it takes 0.42 seconds to go that 1.9 meters across the window. It starts out with some initial velocity. It ends up with some final velocity. And the, the distance and the time are given. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat that almost like it's its own problem. So I've got the first part of this problem. Uh, 
uh, will be when the flower pot falls the first distance h. So we're going from rest to the top of the window, right? And here we're going from the top to the bottom. of the window. Okay. I like to set up my data in a data table. Always when I solve these problems, it takes an extra second. I know that, but it saves you a lot of time redoing the problem later or getting the wrong answer because you missed a minus sign or something like that. Organize your data, keep track of those minus signs, and these problems fall into place very nicely. So five things we need to know. We need to know the change in y. That means we have an initial and a final y position. I'm going to call those ones for first part of the problem. We also are going to have an initial and a final velocity for the first part of the problem. And we're going to have an acceleration and a time. Those are our five parameters. For the second part of the problem, we'll have the same five parameters. We'll have an initial and a final position. And that gives us our delta y for the second part of the problem. An initial and a final velocity, an acceleration, and a time. So let's fill in the information we know. For the first part of the problem, that flower pot starts on the windowsill, which is H plus 1.9 meters. And that's a positive value. It's above, it's in the positive direction from our origin. It ends up at 1.9 meters. It ends up at the top of the windowsill sorry, at the top of the window. And it has an initial velocity of zero. The final velocity we don't know. The acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared in the negative direction, the downward direction. <clears throat> and the time we don't know. So if we knew three items here, we could solve for the other two, but we only know two. Right, we're missing h here, so we don't know delta y, we don't know v final, we don't know t. So we only have two pieces of information. We're missing a piece to our puzzle, so we can't solve this puzzle yet. But if we take a close look at the second part of the problem, we can solve for that missing piece of the puzzle and figure everything out. So our initial position for the second part of the puzzle is the top of the window. And our final position is the bottom of the window. We don't know the initial velocity or the final velocity. The acceleration is the same here. It's uh, in the downward direction, which we're calling negative. And the time is given 0 0.42 seconds. So here we do know three things. We know delta y, a, and t and we can solve for our initial and final velocities. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing that we want to look at here is that these two problems, these two parts of the problem are linked. And one thing that we notice right off the bat is the accelerations are the same in this case. And the other thing that we want to see that'll help us solve this problem is that the final velocity from the first part of the problem is going to be equal to the initial velocity of the second part of the problem. So the final velocity of the first part of the problem and the initial velocity of the second part of the problem are the same, right? That's the same point. So what we'll do is we'll solve for V1 
in the uh, V initial of uh, the second part of our problem. We don't care what V final is because the problem doesn't ask for it. And we'll plug that in over here in the first part of the problem. And then we can solve for H. So the kinematics equations, we'll take a look at those. And we want to pick the one that's missing V final because we know everything else and we can solve for V initial. So that's this equation, Y final is equal to Y initial plus V initial T plus one half A T squared. And this is just for the second part of the problem. So our final position is zero. Our initial was 1.9. Those are positive. That's positive. We have a V initial. T is 0 0.42 seconds. One half A T squared. And uh, don't forget, you have to retain the minus sign on the acceleration and everything else was positive in this equation. So what I end up with is a V initial for part two of negative 2.47 meters per second. So if we, uh, if we think about that for a minute, is the sign right? Let's go back and look at our original problem. The pot is falling in the downward direction and up is positive, so it has to be negative. And the units are meters per second. And the magnitude, it's hard to say if that's exactly right. We know it's not going to be thousands or probably uh, hundreds of meters per second. So, so two and a half meters per second, that's probably close to, to a reasonable answer, reasonable magnitude. So we check our units, we check our sign, and we check for, uh, for the magnitude. Think about it a little bit, see if it makes sense. Now we'll plug this back into the first part of the problem, and we'll look for an equation that's missing time, because we don't know the time for the first part of the problem. We'll use this equation. V final squared is V, in, v initial squared plus 2A delta Y. And so I've got 2.47. squared. That's my final velocity of the first part. And we have zero for the initial velocity. Here, let me write this differently. Let me write this as uh, 1.9, which is my final y, minus h minus 1.9, which is my initial y. That's better. And those cancel. My minus signs cancel here. And uh, what do I end up with? I end up with h. So H H was about a third of a meter, about a foot above the uh, the window. <clears throat>